Good morning, everyone. This is Pastor Britt Strohecker at New Beginnings Church of Middletown, Pennsylvania. And yes, I know that some of you have informed me that you have missed these daily devotionals on the internet, and uh, it's all because I've been slacking, and slacking because I've been too busy to do them, and I made some changes recently to try to help that out. As of Tuesday, August the 8th, I'm letting my CDL license expire and allowing my driver's license to revert back to a normal one. Uh, which, in this case, seeing that I was driving school bus part-time, this will bring me back to normal. <laughs> but uh, I'm not going to be driving school bus anymore and will not be driving for the new school year when it starts at the end of August this year. And I'm going to be focusing all my energy and all my effort here at the church. Uh, so it's my schedule is not going to be one where I wake up in the morning, take the kids to school, come into church, do the church activities and do my church responsibilities and oh wait it's time to take the kids back home from school run out to the bus take them home from school then oh wait i gotta come back to the church and do the evening church activities you know it's all kinds of back and forth and i think i'm about done being a yo-yo so uh although some of you may think i'm still a yo-yo but anyway that's beside the point um i'm not gonna be doing that this year so the lord has pretty much let me know hey you helped out the people that you needed to help out and driving there but now it's time to move on to the next thing and part of that moving on is i want to be more consistent in doing these devotionals because i know like i said at the beginning here some of you have told me that you missed them and wonder why i haven't been doing them so that's pretty much why i haven't been doing them i've been running here there and everywhere like a chicken with his head cut off so now that we're done with that, and speaking of cutting, I really got to get my hair cut, so I'm working on that. Don't worry about that. I'll look better sometime soon. You'll know when I made it out to the barber. Anyway, um, I wanted to focus back on doing these devotionals for you uh, because I think it's very, very important, obviously, to get the gospel out, the good news of the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, because Frankly, there's nothing more important in this world than the love of Jesus Christ. And that's what I tell the church all the time. That's what my grandfather emphasized to me. So I want to emphasize that to all of you. And I want to try to answer some questions and make the Bible a little more practical for you. Uh, that those of you that don't have a lot of time to crack it open and read it or sometimes get frustrated. Because when you do read it, you don't understand it or it doesn't make sense or it, draw, it, it brings up questions in your mind. So I want to get back and try to help you with that. And I also want to tell you a little bit about our church here at New Beginnings because we are an independent Bible church. We are not part of any denomination. We are still part of the body of Christ because we are a Christian church, but we're a Bible-believing Christian church. And when we say Bible-believing, that means that we believe that the Bible is the inspired word of God. And God says in his Bible, he said to the prophet Isaiah, I never go back on my word. So number one, we know that the Bible is reliable, that the promises, the wisdom, and the information that it contains is something that God will never change. And if God's not going to change it, and he is the only one that has the authority to do so, then why is it that so many in this world today are trying to change it for him? Because they don't have the authority to change it. In fact, some people are trying to sugarcoat some of the message of the Bible, which you know, when you do that, you're taken away from God's wisdom and you're also trying to play God, uh, which is kind of blasphemous if you really think about it. So we shouldn't be fooling around with that kind of stuff. And then some people are saying, well, some of it's antiquated. It doesn't apply or, it, or it's kind of bigoted towards different people in this world. No, 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 no. Don't buy into that kind of compromise. That's the biggest problem with the body of Christ, the church overall, the Christian church in today's world. There are too many denominations out there that think they got to placate different people out in the community in order to continue to attract them to the church. And what are they doing? They're being uh, hypocritical, you know, and that's one of the biggest criticisms that Christians face on a daily basis. You know, people are always calling us hypocrites because we're not following what's in God's word. And, you know, why... 
uh, make that a true statement by compromising and not following what's in God's word. A lot of denominations are starting to do that in today's world, and it's not a good thing. Let me just make something clear. If God calls something in the Bible sin, that's what it is. He is the one that has defined what is good and what is bad, what is good for us and what is bad for us. And why would we ever, ever have the audacity to challenge or question his authority or his wisdom, seeing that he is the creator and is responsible for all this, including you and me. So, you know, you see where I'm coming from? There, there are hypocrites in the body of Christ, and they're the ones that are turning their back on the Bible and trying to placate the desires and the fleshful, lustful things that the world wants us to to follow after. And I'm not just talking about sexual things. I'm talking about money, greed, all the all the sins and temptations that God points out in his Bible and says, look, you need to stay away from this kind of stuff because it is going to have a negative impact on you. So that's what I want to talk about today. You know, with at New Beginnings Church, we are a faith-based church without the religion. In other words, we're not here going through the motions, doing rituals, and putting on a show for anybody. We're here to look at God's word and glean from its wisdom and learn what it's going to take for us to be obedient to that word. Because if we're not obedient to that word, then it shows that, number one, we don't love God truly with all our heart, all our soul, all our mind, and all our strength. And it means that we question God's wisdom and that we don't trust him. So, you know, if someone says to you, I don't trust you, or I'm questioning your wisdom, you know, that doesn't create a good relationship between you and that person. So what do you think or how do you think that impacts your relationship with God. One of the things I want to point out here in 1 Samuel chapter 15 at verse 22, it says, obedience is far better than sacrifice. Obedience to God's word means that we trust it, we look to it, and we can make a commitment to follow it, and we don't change it or compromise it in any way. Because if we don't trust in it, if we don't believe it, and we compromise it, we're making sacrifices that are only going to impact us negatively. That's why obedience is far better than sacrifice. And I know people have trouble with that word obedience because they think God is some sort of God that's going to confine you in some way or put shackles on you or enslave you so that you can't enjoy life. God is not like that in the least bit. Why does he put forth his word? Why does he define sin? Why does he give us this wisdom to keep us away from the bad things? Because he wants us to have a good life. And he wants us to live freely without being burdened down or carrying the heavy weight of burden of sin that is out there. So, you know, we got to understand obedience is not a bad word here. Obedience is a very good thing. Why? Because only through obedience will we find true freedom, freedom to live a life that is going to be the best one possible that we could ever imagine. So 1 Samuel 15 verse 22, obedience is far better than sacrifice. That's coming from the New Living Translation. So we at New Beginnings Church know that it's very important to be obedient to God's word. Why? Because if we truly want to find the good life and we truly want to be blessed by God, then we need to obey his word. Proverbs chapter 3 verses 5 and 6 is probably some of the best advice that the Bible gives if you want to live a good life. It says here, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will direct your paths. So never question God. Never think, well, 
God says that this type of behavior is bad. So the people that are engaging in it are bad people. Is he passing judgment on them? Well, God does have the authority to pass judgment, but judgment day has not come here yet. So is he passing judgment on them at this time? No, not at this time. Someday, if they don't seek his will, and they don't look to the wisdom of his word, and they don't trust him at his word, then when judgment day comes, they will have something to worry about. They will have something to be concerned about. But until then, we need to trust in the Lord with all our heart. And that means letting go of these human ideologies and these human ways of thinking, these worldly ways of thinking, and allow God to transform our minds to his way of thinking, like he says in Romans chapter 12, verse 2. So, it's, and, and there he's telling us, don't even conform to the custom of this world. Uh, you know, seek out what the Lord wants, what his wisdom is. That's the only way you're going to find the good life in this world. And that's the only way you're going to be prepared for the life that is to come. And hopefully, if you're wanting to live forever in a good place in heaven, in the kingdom of heaven with the Lord, it's time to be obedient now. That's not, you know, you can't live your life recklessly and at the end of life say oh lord just please forgive me like jesus went to the cross and 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 died for my sins you know that's not a get out of jail free card you know when you accept the lord jesus christ as lord and savior of your life that means you need to make a daily conscientious effort not to allow yourself to fall into the trappings of temptation and sin and that's something that we need to really put a little more effort into and a little more focus on instead of thinking, well, I can do whatever I want because Jesus loves me and he's going to forgive me anyway. Well, you're taking his sacrifice for granted then. You know, he gave his life for you for a reason, for a purpose, and that's for you to stay away from sin, not to give you a get out of jail free card so you can go out and have a hi-ho time and expect forgiveness when it's time for you or when you think your life is coming to an end. So it's not how it works. And that's not trusting in the Lord with all your heart. And it says here, don't depend on your own understanding. You know, when we when it says that, it means don't fall for anything that's going on out in this world or don't fall for anything that's on the Internet. You really need to do your own research and you really need to examine everything through the truth of God's word. Only then will you get to the truth because God is the one who is to find truth. And that's the truth that will set us free. Not some worldly truth. You want to follow a worldly ideology or a worldly truth, then you're going to be enslaved to it. I guarantee it. So don't depend on your own understanding. Seek his will. Whose will? God's will. In all that you do, everything, everything in your life seek his will in it because he is going to lead you on a path that he has determined for you the path that's going to be bring you the most blessing the most success the least amount of stress and the least amount of pain and suffering uh, if you are willing to just seek his will out too many times people follow their own way, their own vices, their own desires, or somebody else's advice who doesn't have their best interests in mind. And then they wonder why they are in the circumstances that they're in or why, why did God allow this to happen in my life? Well, it's not that God allowed it to happen in your life. You kind of facilitated it if you followed your own way and followed your own will instead of seeking out the Lord's will. So seek his will in all that you do. And why? So he can direct your paths. You know, if you want to reach the goal, if you want to reach heaven, if you want to live a good life, if you want to be free from burdens and struggles and pain and sorrow, then you need to follow the path that the Lord has set before you. That doesn't mean that your life isn't going to be without its struggles and its pain and its sorrows. But when they come, you will see how to get through them without suffering them needlessly for longer periods of time than what is necessary. That's what God will do for you. So too many people overlook that and don't want to be involved with that. You see... 
We need to change our way of living, myself included, uh, because only then, if we allow God to change us, will we ever discover what our purpose is, what the meaning of life is, and why are we here, and the person that God intended us to be. In fact, back in 1 Peter chapter 5, here is the best advice that God can give you uh, that has been given to us through a godly man. It says, so humble yourselves under the mighty power of God. In other words, submit yourselves to God. And in his good time, he will honor you. Think about that. Your creator will honor you if you honor and obey him. Give all your worries and cares to God. Why? For he cares about what happens to you. You know, you may have friends, you may have family, but they're not going to care for you or love you as much as God does. And you have to realize that God's love is unconditional. Human beings, there's always at some point a condition for their love. But with God, there is no condition for love. So he loves you regardless of who you are. He just wants to make you into a better person if you're willing to trust and obey him. So he cares about what happens to you. Now he says here, be careful. Watch out for attacks from the devil, your great enemy. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone or some victim to devour. So Satan is always out there looking for weakness. And when he sees a weakness in you, he's going to exploit it. And he's going to nag you and he won't let it go. And as long as you entertain or allow him to poke at your weakness without seeking the Lord's help or the Lord's protection, then guess what? You are making yourself vulnerable to temptation, which makes you then vulnerable to sin, which makes you then vulnerable to the hellfire. It's just a simple matter of truth here that's told to us in the Bible. Take a firm stand against him and be strong in your faith. Remember that your Christian brothers and sisters all over the world are going through the same kind of suffering you are. There's no Christian out there who doesn't know pain, who doesn't know suffering, who doesn't know temptation. We all go through it. But if we all pull together and hold to our faith and hold each other accountable to our faith and accountable and obedient to the word of God, I'm telling you, you think the world is a mess right now? If we were willing just to commit to that, you would not believe the positive impact and change that would happen virtually overnight in this world. So, you know, there's other people out there that are suffering just like you are. So stop wallowing around in your suffering and go to God and go to other believers and share the faith and get strong in your faith. Take a stand in your faith so that you can say to the devil, look, I'm not going to allow you to play with me like this anymore. I'm not going to allow you to make me suffer like this anymore. In fact, I'm not going to allow you to distract me like this anymore because i got better things to focus on. And that better thing is the love of Jesus Christ. In his kindness, God called you to his eternal glory by means of Jesus Christ. What does that mean? God has a place prepared for you in heaven. Jesus has prepared that place for you. You don't believe me? Go to John chapter 14. He'll tell you all about it. When the time's right, he'll come to get you and gather you together so that you can be in that place in heaven. Why? Because God has called you to his eternal glory by means of Jesus Christ. In other words, you want to get to heaven. There's only one way to get there, and that's through Jesus Christ, period. So, after you have suffered a little while, he will restore, support, and strengthen you, and he will place you on a firm foundation. All power is his forever and ever, all men. And friends, if you don't put your faith and trust in that statement alone, then you are going to suffer needlessly in this life. And God doesn't want anyone suffering needlessly in this life. I don't know how more clearly I can state that to anyone. That is why a sinner like me has placed his trust in this word. Why? Because when I'm not in this word, guess what? My life is miserable. 
My life is vulnerable to things that I shouldn't be getting involved with. However, when I stand upon this word, I can honestly tell you that life is so much better than I ever imagined possible. And I'm telling you, you know, people think, oh, things are so boring or my life is so boring or I'm so disappointed with my life. Well, keep telling yourself that and that's the way you're going to live your days. But when you say, Lord, what else is there? What do you want me to do? How do I change things? Or what is the life that you have intended for me? Man, you ask him those questions. He's like, all right, let's get to work. Let me show you what it is I want to do for you. And I'm telling you, you are going to be nothing less than amazed. And people who place their trust in, their, in, in, in God are never disappointed. Now, let me make something very clear to you that I think was an excellent statement made by the Reverend Dr. Charles F. Stanley this past weekend in his message. He said that when we pray to God, make sure that we're praying to the God of the Bible. Now, I mean, that might seem like common sense or, you know, what's so special about that statement, Pastor Britt? Well, I'll tell you what's special about that, because he said there are too many people in this world that are praying to a false God. In other words, people pray to a God that they expect will conform to their desires, their whims, their wants, their dreams, and don't even pay attention to the God of the Bible. So when they pray, God isn't hearing their prayers. Why? Because they're praying to some other God that isn't the God of the Bible. If you want your prayers heard, then you need to know who the God of the Bible is. And you will only know him if you read the Bible you accept it, you obey it, and you ask the Holy Spirit to guide you through it and to give you the knowledge and the wisdom that God wants to give you through this Holy Word. Only then will you know who you are praying to. Until then, you're going to pray to some false God out there that you think is going to answer to your every desire and is going to be the God that suits you. So I hope you can see the difference there. There's a difference between the God that we make up and suits us versus the God of the Holy Bible. The God of the Holy Bible is the only one true God that exists. Nothing else. There's no other God but the God of the Bible. So that's why it says here, you know, he will place you on a firm foundation. He will restore support and strengthen you. All power is his forever and ever. Amen. That's the God of the Bible. So that's the God that we need to place our faith and trust in. Uh, because God knows when we're just playing religion versus having faith in him. In fact, he said to the prophet Isaiah, These people say they are mine. They honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far away. And their worship of me amounts to nothing more than human laws learned by rote. So there, God's expression, frustration, that people aren't getting to know him and know him through his word. Uh, people are just going through the motions with their faith, or they're making up some false god that they worship, which and all intents, for all intents and purposes is they're worshiping themselves because they're making up a god that suits them. And that's not the God that we are to worship. Again, we are to worship the God of the Bible. So only when we honor him with everything in our heart directed and posed towards him. In other words, we need to give him our heart. And he knows our hearts. He knows those that are lying. And he knows those who have truly given him their heart. So which one are we going to be? That's the question. And that's a question that only we can answer. And that's the answer is already known by God. Why? Because he already knows how you feel. He knows how you truly feel about him. And he knows whether or not you truly want to be his. So I can't stress that enough to each of you how important that is. You know, and... Again, with new beginnings, we need to be the faith-based church 
that believes in the God of the Bible, not the God that suits the church or the community or all factions of the community uh, through compromise of his word. We need to focus on the one true God who is in the Bible, not the one that suits people. So, and then once we understand that, we have to really, really true, truly appreciate what God did for us through his son, Jesus Christ. We cannot get close to God, nor will we ever have access to God unless we accept the salvation and the sacrifice that was made for us by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Only then will we be able to approach God and make a conscientious effort to live a sinless life as much as possible through the grace of God and the love of Jesus Christ. And once we really get to that point, only then are we able to fulfill the Great Commission. And this is another thing that we need to do, not only at New Beginnings Church of Middletown, Pennsylvania, but in every Christian church. Our mission is clear and has been laid out for us by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If we love the God of the Bible, are willing to trust him, have faith in him, and show him how faithful we are to him through our obedience to him, then will we be empowered, and only then will we be empowered to share the love of God in Jesus Christ. And then we can fulfill the Great Commission. Jesus said, I have been given complete authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. Remember, Jesus said, I didn't come here to abolish the law. I came here to fulfill it. So he says, when you go out and give people the good news of the gospel and you baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, when they're willing to give their lives to the Holy God of the Bible, then you need to teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. That is the mission and purpose of the church. And if the church you are attending is not focused on bringing people to Christ and being obedient to his word, not a compromise word, but the stated word that was stated by God through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Bible, the God who says he never goes back on his word, that's the only time you know that you're not wasting your time at a church. But if your church isn't doing that, you're wasting your time and you are being led away from the God of the Bible. So folks, I cannot stress to you how important all of this is. And I know that I just did a big verbal dump here uh, in this uh, devotional video, but we got to start somewhere. And I got to stress to you the seriousness and nature of faith. It's not religion. And if you're into practicing religion, then faith in Christ is not for you. There's other religions out there that have many things they want you to practice. Or there's many false religions out there that you can practice till the cows come home and it's not going to make a difference for your salvation or your life to come in eternity. You know, there's two places we can go in eternity, and that's either living with God in heaven or being eternally separated by, from God and eventually being annihilated in the lake of fire in the second death. That's all from the Bible. That's not my opinion. And nothing I state here is my opinion. This is all stated word in the Bible. And I've often told my congregation, you know, the moment I preach something that's not in the Bible, give me the boot because I'm not worth anything to you anymore. And that's what all preachers need to be dedicated to and committed to because this is God's word. If we can't make a commitment to this, then we have no business trying to communicate that word to others and being God's messengers or shepherds for others. So, and... 
it's not just pastors that need to be shepherds for others. We all need to be shepherds and following the Lord, our shepherd, the one that's in the 23rd Psalm. And, you know, that's probably a good place for us to close today. So let me find it here. And I'm going to read you what it says from the New Living Translation here. The Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along right paths, bringing honor to his name. Even when I walk through the valley of dark valley of death, I will not be afraid for you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of, oh, excuse me, of my enemies. You welcome me as a guest, anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. You know what? I want to challenge each of you to take a look at that psalm and take it verse by verse and prayerfully consider what that psalm means to you, if anything. And that's going to be a good start point for you to understand, is the Lord truly the shepherd of your life? Until next time, which hopefully will be tomorrow, because like I said, I want to be more consistent with these. I love all you guys, but nothing in this world is more important than the love of Jesus Christ.